Welcome to the VVIP. My guest today is Fatma Afia. She is a social development consultant and a former deputy minister of Ministry of Health and Family. Fatma Tafi, a very warm welcome to the VVIP. Thank you for inviting me. More than 30 years you have been in the social services sector. It's all about helping people that who really needs help, solving problems in the community. Of course, that's a very valuable work. But what makes that field fascinates you? Uh, during the course of my um, 30 years, I can say uh, working in the social uh, sector has been very satisfying and uh, I have worked in different uh, groups of pe um, people, uh, especially like people with disabilities, uh, women, um, children, you name it, we, I have worked. And I can give an example of uh, one um, scenario. Uh, we have lots of children who come who require um, attention and work rehabilitation services. So even if one child with a disability, they can lift a hand to a minimal and you know tries to hold a pencil, that is very satisfying feeling for the people, even for the families. So there are lots of uh, these kind of, um, you know, satisfying experiences that I have had over time. And it's social work, the, the profession, uh, helping individuals, families, groups and communities to enhance their individual and collective well-being. Uh, but there are many other areas, m many other areas that uh, actually um, people are doing work in specialised fields. But is it people tend to forget these days the importance of social services? Um, yeah, I mean, if you look even globally or in the models, social sector is a area that's gray area that requires attention from the policy makers as well as the community. If you look, uh, for example, uh, look at the children's um, children welfare. That's an area that requires great attention, though uh, some policies have been uh, developed to, uh, for, uh, for the well-being of uh, children, but still like sexual abuse um, in our neglected children, which requires great attention. So there are lots of uh, issues in the social sector that require well, why, why do you think that uh, the community, the world community, they don't, as you say, don't give much importance to social services. Why is it? I think uh, if you look uh, specific, uh, specifically in the Asian context, more attention these days are focused on political uh, issues rather than social issues. I think that's where we need to look in into social issues, uh, the well-being of the people, and try to link that politically also if you uh, if you want to focus on any any matter you need to relate to social services as well um, um, in order to have a um, high standard of living I mean the living standard with co good quality of life this is something the social services sector would really need to be really great I mean it, it would play a huge role. Uh, you have been in your career, surely you should have seen places where the quality of life is really, uh, I would say, high. Uh, how you can relate to this social services improvement in those countries? Um, well, I have travelled widely um, uh, to the developed countries as well as developing countries um, in Europe, uh, US and uh, South Asian countries. And I have traveled to the very under-deserving under areas. Uh, I think 
Again, going back to Maldives context, recently I traveled to Torrenti Islands for a tour. And I think, I believe uh, we need uh, to allocate funding and resources uh, to improve their lives. And it's, it's really interesting how the communities, they have resilient uh, power. So if we can, uh, you know, source channels of funding and resources, we can em empower them to have a better life. In order to improve the social service sector, the, the policy makers, they have, uh, they have the power very much, a huge authority over this sector because they're the policy makers. They're the people who lead the country. Uh, but uh, is there any other way that the sector can be improved other than the, the blessing of the policy makers? I think uh, 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 many um, countries, including Maldives, uh, when, especially uh, during the tsunami, the communities have proved that they are very resilient and they can uh, be empowered by themselves. Uh, but again, I want to emphasize that political willpower is very important to make changes uh, in the social sector. Uh, if you want to focus on rights of children or gender equality, even in the context of Maldives, uh, if you uh, look at the statistics, we have less women uh, at the decision-making uh, level, which requires the blessing of the you know, policy makers actually to uh, make it a reality to give the opportunity for the women. So there are lots of lots of issues I can go and go and it can be very lengthy. Uh, what was the uh, most memorable encounter in this your field more than 30 years in the social services field? Uh, like I gave you the previous example, uh, I can relate many um, uh, many experiences that left me uh, appreciative of the work I do. For instance, uh, uh, I remember we conducted a political participation training uh, just before the local council elections. And uh, till to this day, we have seen lots of those women we have trained and empowered, and they have been uh, uh, as part of the council members. Uh, so that's very, you know, satisfying feeling, which I can't uh, explain. There are many, many such experiences. I think that's uh, one reason if you ask uh, somebody who works in the social sector, it's not uh, only, you know, the power or the recognition, but it's more how uh, the people appreciate and the connection you make with the communities, with the people. In you think, what's your the biggest achievement? Um, <laughs> it's hard to say that, uh, but I guess I have grown over the years, uh, being appreciated by people. Uh, you know, uh, even today, lots of uh, people uh, invite me to go to the islands to conduct training because I give very practical training to them, so you know they get empowerment. When we talk about social services, I should talk about NGO that really evolved in social services, Care Society. You was one of the founding members long ago, we am talking about. Tell me about the experience. Myself and four others, uh, we founded Care Society on 9th November uh, 19, 1998, which is 19 years ago. Uh, at the time when I started uh, Care Society, uh, I was just nobody. Um, just somebody from the community with a heart to help, uh, you know, a needy cause. And I, because I had a sister uh, who had a, a disability, I think that was one of the focus areas. Care society even to today, uh, working on people with disabilities. Uh, so we established even a rehabilitation center to today, which is called Care, a care Development Center under Care Society, which is being run. And I found that two other NGOs as well, uh, which is called Maldives Angel Federation, because after the tsunami, I realized that there was, uh, you know, no NGO network was working co collaborate collaboratively together. So Angel Federation, the purpose was actually to help the, all the NGOs to come together and to work. 
And then uh, in 2012, again, uh, uh, during the tsunami, uh, we founded Maldivian uh, Network for Empowering Women, which is uh, short, uh, in short, we call MNU. Uh, we uh, try to, uh, to empower women in communities. Again, it's a kind of network we come together. Care to Society, help. I'm talking about one of the leading NGOs in the Maldives. How actually you're co contributing to the NGO now? Now, uh, now also I do lots of uh, uh, social uh, work, which means uh, I help not only care society, even if care society they want to uh, help with uh, report writing or proposal writing, I help them. But there are other NGOs, even from the islands, which I help them um, to, with their report writing, things like that. Um, but because uh, my position is that once you found uh, an NGO uh, which has been very successful, uh, successful during my time, we have done lots of work and uh, you know raised lots of awareness on people with disabilities. Today we have lots of uh, NGOs working on disability, but during uh, that time there were very few people with uh, few people with disabilities that come out in the open. They were mostly kept inside the house. But we broke that stereotyping uh, and we have people uh, and the families to come out. Because with my own experience, with my family, whenever I take out my sister, you know, people will uh, stare at her or make comments. So that was a, a breaking ground for me actually to work. Uh, NGOs in any country I'm talking about, uh, it's quite difficult for them to operate in some circumstances because of the funding, because of the authorities, not enough help they're getting. There's, there's some obstacles them to function. You believe in that? Yeah, I think that's one of the um, one of the area key area I could say uh, I have been pushing the agenda across uh, to p policy makers. Uh, selling the idea that NGOs actually can function with the support of, you know, um, political agenda, which means even the government, they need NGOs because the check, check and balance can be done by the NGOs. And uh, in a country like Modis, there is very limited government funding. Uh, what I believe is uh, even uh, the government um, work can be implemented through the NGOs and the government can play the role of monitoring so that you know the government can make the NGOs accountable so we can be responsible. It's an it's a area that requires great need, attention I would say. NGO, when we are talking about NGO, social services sector. NGOs can play a vital role to promote social services, whatever NGO. Of course, NGOs, they have different purposes, but how NGOs can be a, like a, can a proxy role to promote social services throughout the community? I think uh, there are lots of, uh, of, uh, lots of NGOs in the Maldives. They are doing really, really great work. We should be appreciated. Again, uh, what I said earlier, and uh, uh, NGOs can, cannot survive without funding because even the people who work in the NGOs, they need to survive, they, they have to earn a living. Uh, plus uh, the programs they implement uh, for the uh, betterment of the community uh, or for the people, they, they need funding. So there are lots of uh, programs being implemented in the islands as well as in Mali that can be outsourced to the NGOs so that uh, that way, I think uh, uh, it will have a better outcome of uh, programs in the social services. Um, you have been very much involved in consultancy work, especially in the social services and also in business, business consultancy, um, social development consultancy I'm talking about. Tell me about the experience. Yeah, I lived uh, um, in um, three other countries uh, for a while, so I had my own business again uh, because uh, I worked for over 30 years in the social sector. Uh, I always ensure that, you know, that whatever work I do that has a social aspect, which means empowering people, 
so that addresses uh, their lives can be improved. Um, so it's been three years since I have been living in Mali after break living in the UK with my husband. Uh, recently I started my own business, um, mostly capacity building and training. Uh, but again, like I mentioned, you know, the focus is on um, building people, developing people and training people so that, that they can be empowered. That's a great area, area that I love, uh, empowering people. Um, as I've said, uh, these days it's quite difficult for, to operate NGOs and also in social work, uh, social services. There are other more important challenges the world is facing. You think because of the social services sector is neglected, uh, I mean, of course, uh, I'm not talking about the research, but what's your opinion in this wars and uh, huge ethnic violence around the countries and so much disagreement, so much pressure uh, for, for, for people around the world. Uh, what's your take on that? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I like to look uh, uh, to go back to our country, Maldives, uh, taking from experience of the countries we have been talking, we can see violence uh, in other countries. And also uh, because of the uh, de democracy, I can say, we, we also are experiencing uh, this kind of issues. And like I told you recently, with my travel, to the islands, there are families, even small children, who are divided by this kind of conflict between, you know, the differences between people. By my belief, it's nothing should actually uh, uh, have a bad impact on children. That's one of uh, area that I feel very sad about in the Maldives. Uh, we can help uh, if uh, the Maldives, we all of us join the together make uh, make a better place for the children uh, look at the the high rate of sexual abuse the high rate of violence against children uh, sexual harassment um, um, for women you can see there are lots of women who have reported they have had been uh, harassed on the roads it doesn't matter whatever clothes you wear still women are harassed in workplace, but these are not documented. We need lots of research actually to document all these the issues we have in the models. And again, we we have a very uh, growing population of the elderly people, and uh, lots of people have come to me and saying, you know, about their families because nowadays, you know, because of the nuclear families. Um, uh, families are finding it hard to look after the uh, older people. So we need actually, um, you know, the policy makers as well as um, NGOs to come up, uh, develop a strategy, how we can address other issues in the country. So in order to improve the quality of life, you know, I'm talking about any country, what should be the most important factor the authorities should focus or one of the factors that authorities should focus? Um, I think the focus uh, should be uh, working along with the NGOs because... But some people say education is the Education is important. important. I believe that education is important. But again, uh, you have to come up with uh, strategies that works best for the, uh, for the country. I mean, look at the, our country. I mean, it's, uh, it's not being critical of, you know, any area or any party or you know, any sector. But if we can just give a small example, we always, when we are together, friends, we talk about these issues, like, you know, the children, uh, their behavior has, uh, you know, uh, behavior is so bad. Uh, there are lots of work that we need to work with the children. So these kind of issues, I think, that's what I mentioned, we need to work together jointly, otherwise, you know, of course, we can go back to education sector, but I would say it's much broader uh, work that needs to be done. Of course, education, uh, uh, we, have a, we should be very proud that we have a good ed education system, but that there needs to be fed in lots of other um, strategies that can work to improve the situation we are facing today. 
Um, in the Maldives uh, social services, we, we see social workers. Uh, but there's one thing I want to highlight is that social services sector in the capital Malé and at all, I mean, islands, apart from the city, the, what have you noticed? Um, I'm glad you asked that question. That's very critical um, for the social sector because I have traveled uh, widely uh, uh, to almost all the islands except a few islands that I haven't traveled to. Uh, there's a great difference between the services that's provided in Mali uh, to the services being provided in um, in the islands. I remember uh, I did uh, community consultations in uh, 2015, and uh, because I went and interviewed the key stakeholders, um, you know, the council members, the children protection service centers. Um, all these uh, all these people stated that you know the so uh, I think the main findings were that they lacked trained people. They didn't have the facilities. I mean, for instance, if uh, if a child is taken into state care, then they need to be a place where they can accommodate. You know, put them until they can be brought back to Malem. We are you know here. Uh, where the children are kept, but uh, the staff they do you know night duty, and uh, they were really uh, talking about these issues. I think we need um, lots of uh, provide lots of training and uh, general funding resources to improve the situation. It's very hard to talk about these uh, matters because I have worked in the sector, and it touches my heart. And because I can see we need lots of work to be done. When we talk about social services, uh, well-being of children, the, 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 that factor needs to be addressed. Uh, we need to educate the community about the well-being of the children and also uh, how they can contribute to society. Of course, they're small children, but there are many ways. What's your idea on that? I think it's very important um, uh, to involve children because uh, it's key uh, to the UNICEF that uh, children be uh, particip uh, be involved as a key stakeholders in any program. Recently also we have the last 10 this year also uh, we have had uh, national conferences on children but we have seen very little participation of children because if we communicate and talk to them, they will only can tell us their problems. And we have a huge uh, problem with uh, bullying and you know other uh, issues uh, in the schools, even at homes. Um, children being abused by their parents, by their other family members. But we need to involve the children um, uh, to get their feedback and um, their thoughts when we plan and design programs for children. Uh, what's, what do you want to do in this field more, in the social services field? Yeah, um, my future involvement would be that I would, I would be doing lots of uh, advocacy and policy work. Uh, my key interest areas are working with children, people with disabilities and um, women. Um, so I will be um, working with policymakers, NGOs, and other key stakeholders. And I would like uh, to travel to the islands and empower people so that uh, we have a better uh, life. And also networking is very important. So I will be working with different uh, experts and key stakeholders to improve their lives. So You've been in social services for such a long time. You have been helping people for better emotional well-being and also to make them successful in their lives, um, breaking the barriers. My question to you is that how to be successful in life? Helping people uh, itself uh, can, be, uh, can bring happiness to you. Um, if you want to work in the social sector, uh, you have to realize it can be uh, very challenging, 
but at the same time it can give you a happiness. Uh, but if you work with uh, commitment, perseverance and you know love for your work, then you will be successful. Fatma Afia, thank you very much for being on the VVIP. Thank you for inviting me.